Greetings, all. Welcome to Aquarian Diary. I'm your host, John Irving. It is June 21st, 2023. Today, I want to give people a general sense of when the insanity and all of the extreme and unhinged behavior we have been witnessing socially and politically will draw to a close, or at least begin winding down, as it often takes time for these forces to dissipate. I'll be displaying quite a few dates on the screen. You may want to watch this on YouTube if that matters to you. On June 15th, I published an episode on the Uranus-Pluto square and the rise of far-right extremism, where I focused just on that one aspect and its parallels to the 1930s. There's another parallel which I didn't specifically talk about in that episode, which is the transit of Uranus through Taurus. Uranus transited Taurus from roughly 1934 until 1942, and is currently transiting Taurus again right now from 2018 through 2026. The previous transit of Taurus occurred during the Great Depression, which ran from 1929 through 1939. It was ended by the war effort. And World War II, which commenced in 1939 through 1945. Uranus is the modern ruler of Aquarius, or the 11th house. Aquarius is fixed air. Taurus is ruled by Venus and is fixed earth. These signs are in a square or antagonistic relationship to each other. Uranus is in its fall in Taurus. It's a challenging sign for Uranus to be in. So these energies do not mix well. Uranus is all about change and revolution, and Taurus is all about security and predictability. So Uranus transiting Taurus is challenging. All signs and planets have positive and negative expressions, and Taurus can be very conservative because it desires security, stability, and predictability, and Uranus is anything but predictable. Like I said, more recently, Uranus has been transiting Taurus since 2018 and will continue to do so through the end of April of 2026. So we have seen a tremendous amount of change, revolution, and instability around Taurian themes like real estate, property, money, investments, where people live. We went through lockdowns where people were confined to their homes. Many people relocated. They moved from the city to the country or suburbs, or even to other countries. People en masse began working from home, Taurus. There were unprecedented supply chain disruptions. We've now been dealing with rapid inflation and greedflation, income disparity and the concentration of wealth in the hands of a few is even more extreme, and so on. Taurus also rules what we value, so we have seen a tremendous amount of changes occurring around people's values and a lot of conflicts around values like the culture wars. Uranus can be quite radical, so we have seen the rise of reactionary conservatism to alarming degrees, such as far-right extremism, authoritarian and fascistic movements who want to impose radically conservative, patriarchal, and hierarchical structures on other people in many of the same ways we saw through 1934 and 1942. In that case, we had an actual world war. Extremely radical behavior and very polarizing social movements. There are currently ultra-right and openly fascistic movements occurring in countries around the world. 
These forces are often anti-intellectual. They reject evidence and science, try and rewrite history. They attack and undermine the media, education systems, and all manner of institutions. They are frequently misogynistic, racist, bigoted, and xenophobic. They define themselves based on their enemies and create them if they don't exist. Fascists always need scapegoats, usually the most vulnerable members of society, such as trans children. What could possibly be more cowardly and despicable than picking on vulnerable children? Propaganda and disinformation are frequently deployed, as are threats, bullying, and intimidation. As we can clearly see, there are many parallels between when Uranus transited Taurus in the late 1930s and early 1940s and recent years. We have also had Neptune transiting Pisces from April 2011, which will continue through 2025 and 2026. Neptune is extra potent while transiting its own sign. The lower expression of Neptune can be delusion, illusion, fantasy, being detached from reality, escapism, alternative realities. We have seen cult-like behavior where people have fallen under the spell of demagogues, con men, grifters, while being completely unable to perceive all of their flaws, and there's a lot of projection and illusion going on. But that also will be wrapping up around 2025, 2026, roughly around the same time that Uranus leaves Taurus. So those are two really important things right there. Again, check the screen for dates. So Neptune transiting Pisces, all of the mass delusion, rampant and absurd conspiracy theories, the inability to distinguish truth from lies, willful, if not belligerent, ignorance, denial of facts, evidence, and reality, falling for lies and propaganda, and shameless conmen grifter criminals, extreme expressions of victimhood, think Donald Trump or the incel movement, or people constantly whining about the crisis of privileged white male masculinity, being completely detached from objectifiable truth or reality, the post-truth era, all of that. Uranus transiting Taurus, radical conservatism, radical traditional cultural values, so distorted that it's almost grotesque, extreme resistance to progress or evolution, the rejection of historical facts pertaining to the oppression of minorities, various racial and ethnic groups, deference to authoritarian and strongman leaders, despite their highly flawed moral character and complete lack of credentials. Neptune in Pisces and Uranus in Taurus, at the same time. <laughs> the United States has been the focal point of a lot of the absolute batshit crazy stuff because it has been going through its Pluto return which I have also done episodes on from February 2021 and will continue through January of 2024, which is when it was within a tight two-degree orb. Pluto transits are actually in effect for a wider orb than that. That is just the most intense phase. But the most intense phase will be winding down by early next year. There has been a lot of crazy stuff going on, but there's no question that the United States has been the focal point globally for the insanity. Just look at how radical and extreme and crazy the Republican Party and the former president and his hapless sycophants have been acting, many of whom may end up incarcerated. In 2025, 2026, Saturn will move into Aries, beginning a whole new 28, 29-year cycle. 
everything points to 2025, 2026 as being the end of the post-truth batshit crazy era. As much as the reactionary conservative forces are trying to put the genie back in the bottle, you cannot resist these major transits of, like, Pluto shifting into Aquarius, Neptune moving out of Pisces, Uranus moving out of Taurus. If you are in resistance to these outer planetary energies, the transits manifest as being extremely challenging and disruptive. You cannot be in resistance to these energies. They are much more powerful than you are as an individual. So the more liberal or more progressive forces are in a much better position to deal with these changing and shifting energies because they are more comfortable with change and evolution. They are more adaptable and open-minded. When Uranus moves into Gemini in 2025-2026, it will be in a trine aspect to the sign of Aquarius, where Pluto is beginning its major 20-year-long transit. This is power Pluto in very harmonious, easy-flowing aspect to Uranus in Gemini. Again, Aquarius, which Uranus rules, is fixed air. Gemini is mutable air. So that relationship, when Uranus enters Gemini, commencing in 2025 and 2026, speaks of very rapid change and evolution in an air sign. Air signs are intellectual and rational. They are very fast-moving energies. These are not slow energies. And like I said, that is a trine aspect that will occur for about seven years. Again, it all points to 2025, 2026 being the end of the post-truth, batshit crazy, reactionary conservative period with this insane polarization. All of the complete detachment from reality on the political right drawing to a close. So that's the time frame. We have another two to three years of craziness to go through. Although, as I've said in other episodes, Saturn transiting Pisces is a reality check, and Pluto transiting Aquarius is also a reality check in many ways. So the tide has started to turn, but we should be completely out of all of this craziness in 2025 and 2026. At least the kind of craziness we're dealing with now. I have been focusing here on all of the negative expressions of these energies. It goes without saying that the opposite is true as well. In fact, the majority of the people have not been expressing the negative aspects of these things. There are still many people who are very grounded in reality and who are able to differentiate between BS and reality. So without question, it is clear that these energies are experienced differently depending on the person. Now, why some people are predisposed to the negative expressions and others are not probably relates a lot to their own particular astrological natal chart. And there are many people in the middle who aren't quite sure where they stand. But, for the purposes of this episode, I am just trying to explain why so many people are going crazy and how long it will last, and when it will mercifully end. Finally, let's be clear about one important thing. The dark side lies, manipulates, deceives, and engages in criminal activity. The light does not lie, cheat, or steal, just to be clear. And yes, I am proudly biased in favor of truth and reality. I understand that much of what's happening is fueled by grievance, but the answer is not to burn the place down. It's funny. 
when I'm editing this audio, I often stop and think, oh, I'm being hyperbolic. And I'll reflect for a moment, and only a moment, before I realize that I can provide credible examples of what I'm describing, things that have actually happened or are happening right now. No, I'm not being hyperbolic. This is all actually happening just as I'm describing it. In other words, it really is this bad currently. For a fuller and more detailed analysis, I will link multiple other episodes that are related in the episode description, which I encourage you to review. I'm going to share a few podcasts simply as a public service. The first is my favorite, and I've mentioned it here before. It is Background Briefing with Ian Masters. I listen to this podcast every day. As far as I'm concerned, this is the best podcast. One of the most amazing things about it is that there's nothing else like it, and I find that hard to believe. God knows what we'll do when Ian Masters retires. The second is a new podcast by the BBC. It is called Mariana in Conspiracy Land. One of the most disturbing things about this podcast is she documents how many people who would have been traditionally progressive are falling into the right-wing rabbit hole as a result of conspiracy theories. Anyway, it's new. Check it out. I personally find it very interesting. It makes me think about the phenomenon of the RFK campaign in the United States. He is being promoted by many libertarian right-wing nutjobs and has the potential to siphon off absolutely critical votes that could help prevent the Republicans from winning the next election. The Republicans winning would be one of the worst possible things that could happen. Even people in the progressive community are falling under the spell of propaganda lies, and disinformation, and even overtly and transparently racist ones. It has eerie parallels with the whole MAGA movement and QAnon and things like that, which to me seems to be a PSYOP campaign, like something the Russians would do. I find that quite disturbing. It's like some kind of weird mind virus like a mental illness that is being spread around. It's very creepy and dark. Many of us have lost people, or even loved ones, to conspiracy theories. It can be heartbreaking. The dark side can be very subtle and devious. We need to be constantly vigilant to inoculate us against its poison. Conspirituality is another podcast in the same vein. It's intellectually rigorous and does not pull any punches, so set your ego aside. Another podcast I have been listening to now for quite some time is The Bulwark with Charlie Sykes. This is coming from a never-Trump perspective, so it's quite unusual for me to listen to something like this. but. The quality of the analysis around what's going on with Republicans and the former guy is very good and very intelligent. So it gives a different perspective than what I normally would listen to. I subscribe to many, many podcasts, but those are a few that I thought would be relevant to this episode. I'll put links in the episode description to any related content, and if you're interested in a reading with me, I'll put a link to that as well. Many sincere thanks to everyone who supports me, especially my YouTube members. Thank you very much. Take care, all the best, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now.